Hi, I'm Lee Allentuck with uh, The Last Game Board, and I'm here today with my bosses, actually, which is very exciting. CEO and founder, Shale Mehta, and uh, COO, COO and founder, um, Tim Shukar. <laughs> hey, guys, what's happening? Good, how are you doing, <laughs> Lee Allentuck? Oh, to a great start, right? <laughs> I got a great right. start. <laughs> um, That's how we do it. That's how we do it. We're here. <laughs> yeah. And the funny thing is, like, um, it's uh it's been a crazy year and a half for this team and and the rest yes. of our team um the what i love to talk about and i love to tell the story is that you and i the two of you obviously know each other and know each other well and have met many many times i've never actually met you guys in person we've never actually sat in the same room and we've been working together for over a year and a half and that yeah. kind of tells a little bit of a story <laughs> here you know, of, of uh, what game board is all about. It's that idea that you don't necessarily have to be in the same place for you to enjoy your games and your friends and things like that. And so I'm excited to talk about that story. But first, let's hear a little bit about you guys. Shell, give us a little uh, a little bit of your origin story, where you come from and, 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 and all that. Sure, um, well, I come from a land far away. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I live in Colorado. So for anyone who doesn't know, Game Board is um, based in Denver here in Colorado. Um, and I, I partially grew up here. Partially, I grew up in India. Um, and, you know, gaming, tabletop gaming is kind of what led me to, to Game Board. It's something that I'm passionate about. It's something that I have played ever since I was, I think every single person in this world has played a tabletop at a board game at some point in their life. Um, but some people are like me where they've made a profession out of it because it's been such a great inspiration for me as I came to the United States, as I learned English, as I made friends, like it's just something that made me feel like a part of a community, like playing RPG and tabletop games. So I feel like game board is a concept and idea that's been on my mind for years mm. and it's manifested about three years ago. But I think that if you ask anyone what's the future of tabletop, they'll tell you some version of game board. Yeah, but, but you don't, you did not, you have not worked in the games business no. before this. Okay. Total outsider. I'm just, I'm a consumer. I'm a player. You know, I come from the other side where I, back a bunch of Kickstarter games that I, you know, and I will buy as many board games as I can in that month and try to play with people every other week before our pandemic. Sure. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm a player. I'm a lover of games, not, not necessarily on the business side. Yeah. All right, Tim, over to you. Um, you have a little yeah. bit of a different background. I know you're not from India, but you live in <laughs> What? Come on. Yes. Yeah. No, I'm in, I'm in Denver as well. Uh, my professionally, I've, I've got an engineering background. So I have an engineer at NASA, um, TPS reports and the whole nine. Um, went into gaming actually over at the Walt Disney Company. Was that, a, <laughs> so, was that an office space quote yeah, right there? A, Holy I, crap. I slid that right in there. Yes, I wow. That. I was just going to let it go. Yeah. Nice. Uh, she calls herself a player and you're like referring back to uh, to office space in the 90s. Cool, I, I might have I might have just dated myself as well. But yeah. anyway. Um, That's all right. That's, uh, I after, think we're after, <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> After NASA, I went over to the Walt Disney Company where I got into, um, I was a hardware engineering at NASA, I got on the software side and, and entertainment and games at the Walt Disney Company out in, in LA. Um, but, you know, I, I, aside from the professional side and, and you know, kind of the, the whole engineering and the moving into business, my whole thing that I, when I look at this, I love to travel, first of all, and I've lived all over the United States. I've lived in uh, Nebraska and Texas and New York and LA and Colorado, obviously all over and then traveled all over the place. I, I studied in, uh, I studied Kung Fu in, with China, Chinese monks. Like I've been literally everywhere. And one of the things that um, always strikes me, people are people everywhere, right? And that is something that um, I don't think we necessarily get to see as much as, as we should. And that's why I love tabletop gaming because it really brings people together. And no matter where you are, people are people. And you really get to, to see them as people and, and learn about them and learn about yourself as well. So, so that's why kind of another underlying selfish reason why I love Game Board is it's it to, to bridge all of those differences and, and really bring us together. No, I think that's fantastic. And I think it's also impressive that the two of you are, for all intents and purposes, outsiders of the normal game business. And, and one of the questions I have 
and let, let's get back to it, but I'm going to ask you this question that can preview it a little bit is that like, how dare you, right? <laughs> how dare you outsiders come in and try to change, you know, the, uh, you know, where the games industry is going, but we'll, we'll get back to that in a second. We'll, we'll mold on that for a minute, but tell us like, you know, you started on it shale a second ago, but what is game board? Like in a nutshell, like, if you had, you know, your elevator pitch, you know, you're in, you're going down the elevator and you got someone to ask you, what do you do? What is it? What is the game board? Game board is a tabletop console. We promote, you know, it's a platform. We aggregate every kind of tabletop RPG game into a single platform. It's the Peloton meets Netflix for tabletop games. People sit around and they play a game. You can invite people to play. It is using technology to enable the things that we love about about tabletop right in that community add real pieces use cards like you know sync your mobile device we're truly cross-platform we're cross genre um, and our whole mission is to democratize play and access for tabletop games and that is game board cool i mean tim do you have anything to add to that that's pretty concise there it's <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's, it's like you've done this before. It's, yeah. like, a, it's no. like Lee has told me what to say about game board. <laughs> <laughs> you nailed it. Wow. It's like if I wrote it for you perfectly. Yeah, so, I mean, like, I, I get this idea that, you know, you, you came over from India and it was your, is your way to connect with a, a new community of people and learn English and everything, which I think is such a fascinating story. But at some point, it's percolated up. Like, where did the idea come from from you guys as far as you know, making this crazy contraption that you've never worked in this industry. Tim, you have engineering background and, and software background, which is, you know, obviously involved, but you know, what made you make that leap? And this was pre, if I recall, this is pre COVID, right? So it's not like people were trapped in their houses to be able to play. No. Where came up with it? How'd you come up with the idea? So I think like about three and a half years ago, um, you know, I had my daughter and I think that we were trying to play a game. I think it was like a simple game or something. And I think she was like nine months old or something at that point. And I'm- again, It must have been Risk or like Catan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It had to be a strategy. I just remember yeah. like playing something and being like, oh my gosh, like what kind of a future is she gonna grow up? Is she, is she gonna just grow up with like engaging like virtual people in this virtual space, never meeting her friends? Like, how is she really gonna game? I can't play Xbox to save my life. How am I gonna connect? How am I gonna like play with her? How am I gonna like, I don't know, how am I going to have her have real connections and through gaming, right? Like technology is not going anywhere. Gaming is not going anywhere. And being a player of tabletop, I've always been like, I can't believe a product like this doesn't exist, right? Like I want to be able to play any game. Like I want to be able to connect with my kid. Okay. So I was like, why doesn't a pro like, why can't I play any game that I want? How do I connect with her and play the games that I like? with with her as she grows up so i went on google and i was like you know there has someone has invented this product and i told tim and he's like someone's probably created this or they're creating this let's like yeah. go this has to exist that yeah it has to exist <laughs> yeah. like I'm everybody sure yeah this has to exist google's created it Every, and then you it. you saw all the gravestones of the industry yeah uh, <laughs> that tried this many times yeah. and failed yeah. miserably and and I just read stories and I was like, oh, like they I didn't know like there was like, you know, amiibos and like all these different things that people were trying. And we like looked at everything and I was like, there has to be a better solution. Honestly, we looked at projectors and cameras and how do you like, how can you do this before? Mm -hmm. And we, we spoke to professors. We, we tapped like engineers at the School of Mines at the University of Colorado. And we would just go around speaking with like professors and gamers being like, you know, how can you how can you bridge physical digital? Like, how can you do this? And people were like, you should try, you know, you should try projection screens. You should try all this. And it was just me and Tim literally going around talking to people for almost a year, mm. figuring out how was this possible to do before we're like, oh, perhaps we can figure out a way to use, you know, capacitive, non-capacitive pieces on a touchscreen device, mm. right? Mm. And what were the limiting factors in that? And that is what led us to meet our third co-founder, Rob Wyatt. Yeah. So, and, I, and just to add I, to that, I, I, yeah. I, I was going to say, I, you know, our focus is, is really around that player experience. And, and that's why we went through so many different iterations and all these different things. How do we actually think about this? And how can we make sure that it's not like, oh, well, you can play tabletop 
but you have to do it in this different way, yeah. right? That that was a main yeah. consideration of why we kept going through this and saying, no, there's got to be a better way to do this. Iterate, 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 as apparently a computer restarts, <laughs> sorry. Um, so we kept iterating on this. How do we focus on that that player experience? How do we get that to, to really where it's at today? And then the other side, which is, um, you know, talking to the gravestones and then to what she mentioned earlier about, um, you know, what, what makes us different around this is that we are publisher agnostic as well, right? We're not a walled garden. We're not trying to say, hey, these are only the games that are going to be on game board. We're saying, hey, we want to have an incredible experience for players and creators alike and bring them onto the central platform. So those, those are two sides that we were really focused on when we were figuring out why doesn't this exist yet? So why, so I guess, where are the pitfalls then? What were the pitfalls for the, for the industry that tried this before? So I think Surface, uh, like the Microsoft Surface table was one of the first ones, right? To really attempt this on a mass consumer level. And honestly, the technology, even for Microsoft, just wasn't there. And it's not that they're not Microsoft and they couldn't throw enough money behind it. It was the <laughs> fact that there's a lot of different factors when it comes to tech enablement, right? There's a lot of different factors in play from software stack to what's feasible with touch technology. And even that, like how are semiconductors made? And, and it takes an entire evolution for technology to make a leap, right? Like <clears throat> someone doesn't just one day come up with something and be like, it will manifest. Like you think that, but that's not how it works, right? There's a lot of different factors that come into a leap in technology. And it's not a leap. Right? And, and a leap into consumer technology. Yeah. Consumer technology. yeah. Affordable yeah. consumer technology. Exactly. Exactly. I always say like it's like the right time and the right place yeah. and the right people. And that is what happened with us, right? We were like going down this rabbit hole of prototypes and iterations and figuring out what this why this wasn't possible. Where where really we ended, we stumbled upon AR patent uh, for what we wanted to ultimately create on game board, but it was this ability to unlock touch on a surface that does not exist today, right? And mm -hmm. that is what we came across was how we can allow you to use your hands in real life on the surface of a game board. And that's our ultimate goal. That's what we wanna do with our technology. It enables that today and we're getting that. And it'll be iterative for us. Like right now you can do physical pieces, you can do unlimited touch, but we are going to see a future where we can mimic literally how you're using your hands in real life on the surface of game board. And again, it'll be iterative and we'll be getting there in the future. And it takes a lot to get there, but where others have failed, I think is A, don't shove technology in for something just for doing it. Like don't just add a, an app to a game because you feel right. like that's what people are doing. Does it add value? What are you creating with that player experience? That was another downfall that we saw in the graveyard of, of tablets, right? What else did, I don't know. I want to say, I just feel like the technology wasn't there at the price point yeah. that it should have been. Was in, in, yep. And it makes sense when you think about it is that, uh, you know, these large companies with huge overhead and factories, you know, their job is to push the price down, right? Not go and leapfrog, you know, at a several hundred dollars for a, you know, a tablet. Um, and that's probably what cornered them into trying to force, oh, let's just take somebody else's technology, toss it on the board. And now we have a spinner, we have a dice roller. It's not really a enhancing. The exactly. Game. Well, and that's, so, that's the, 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 the piece of being purpose built is, is what I think is, is um, really key here as well. Microsoft Surface was a lot of things. It wasn't just for tabletop, it was a lot of different things. And, and you know, um, some of our competitors that are out there today, they're reusing existing technology, existing hardware, and just putting on, you know, a different software on there or something like that. So it's, we, when we are doing this, this purpose built system, it is now to say, we're throwing away all preconceived notions about what is this tabletop device, purpose build it for tabletop. And then, and, and that is an experience that, again, is, is just completely unique and something that, that uh, we're excited to get into people's hands. So who, who is the game board for? Who are who is your target right now and who will it be, you know, three, four or five years down the line? I think our initial target is is, you know, people who love when I say TTRPG, they know what that means. It's like for tabletop players, it's for strategy players. It is for people that like playing risk and things like that. Right. That that spend money and time into making this not just a hobby, but maybe a fanatical hobby. Right. Like that's our first audience. When VR was first adopted, it was adopted by, you know, 
what is it called? I'm, I butcher words. Tech, techno, techno, the technophiles. Technophiles, yeah, that works. Yeah. Is, yeah. That a, is that a word? Early adopters. Yeah. Did I make it is that is now. <laughs> yeah, technophiles, yeah. Yeah, okay, they say I got it. Um, but like- The it was uber adopted. nerds. Yeah, 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 we're all yes. nerds. Um, but yeah, it was adopted by people that were like really enthusiastic about what VR was and what the future was. And that was 10 years ago, right? It took mm -hmm. Oculus over 10 plus years to become a consumer product. Not saying that's our, our path, but for us, it's very deliberate for us to be focused on this tabletop strategy market now. And then we can evolve into family and games. And, and once we've optimized and understood how people are building and playing in this three-dimensional volume, we can then like we can evolve our marketplace to be more focused on casual players and me with my daughter trying to play Candyland, right? But right now we're very focused on what this market is for tabletop players. And what has been the reception from, from that that audience, right? It's uh, you know, it's, it's a very niche audience, but it's a it's a it's a good one, right? They spend a lot of money, they're avid fans, and when they get behind something, they get all the way behind it. But what has been the reaction? It's been what I always say. I've thought about this my whole life. I've taken a TV and put it onto a dining room table <laughs> and tried to do this. Like we literally had people on social media send us like their version of game board, which was like a TV and they put it on a table and they had like a map on there and they had all these, you know, laptops sitting around it trying to play like RPG games. So it's that very- That sounds so stressful. It's very that stressful. sounds and horrible. <laughs> And if, and if anyone did that, I'd be like, get that out of my dining room table. But anyway, so it's just like, I feel like our, our initial audience, our first customers are so excited because they've dreamt of this mm -hmm. themselves and they've wanted to see yeah. this come to life. And I'm so excited to deliver game board to this audience because sure. not only wow. are they the most excited for it, but they're the ones that are going to be our champions and give us the right information back what's working what's not working and how we can make mm -hmm. even better so yeah i think that's amazing and uh what i would like to do is kind of switch over to how this year has impacted what you have created right and so i'll turn to tim the engineer side um although shale is heavily involved in the production and, and development <laughs> of the product i wasn't implying that she wasn't but how dare you him, we got to give Tim some time to talk too. Um, <laughs> talk. I'm an engineer. I'm good just sitting back. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> He's the most extroverted engineer I've ever met. So I got to talk to him. Uh, a little that's bit. True but, no, but it's actually, it's great for both of you because I'm sure before, um, I mean, I know before uh, COVID hit, uh, I had already started working with you and I know the, the, um, sort of the uh, development arch was very different. It was a, you know, we were still sort of looking at different sourcing. Uh, we were looking at a, a faster pace and then suddenly the world shuts down. Um, yeah. Talk a little bit about how this last year has provided challenges and, and opportunities for all of us in the sense of yeah. how making this a reality. Yeah, so so yeah, I mean, we, you know, 2020 is the, the year that wasn't. Um, we, we, you know, we had, a, we did our Kickstarter in 2019, October, 2019, and we were going to be delivering that next year, um, had gone to CES, had gone to PAX, uh, PAX South had all, you know, all these great interactions, people really getting excited. We were gearing up and that did you was actually with, have a table yet at that point. Did you have something developed? Uh, we did. Absolutely. Okay. We did. Uh, but that was, um, Shale, I always forget how many prototypes we had. 6.5, is that where we're at? 7.5. 7.5. Uh, so. Um, that was probably. Really, did, and now did. they all are on your dining room table. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. We do have like a little museum of. It looks like a little like place a bunch of junk, yeah. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, the point, iteration, right? When we talked about that, we really started off and said, hey, we're going to build it. We built essentially what our competitors have and multiple, multiple iterations that so still isn't good enough. That player experience is just not there. So we kept doing it, kept doing it. At Kickstarter, we had our form factor. We had a good experience. We said, okay, this is good. This is, you know, we're going to uh, continually enhance this, but it's going to be great. Did the Kickstarter, COVID hit, and then all of a sudden supply chains just completely ground to a halt, right? So now we're like, oh, we're... Yeah. 
yeah, we're like, we can't, we can't even get things to deliver this year. So, so then we had a, a little barely get search. people we to said, work for free for like a while. <laughs> yeah, Lee. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. So, um, so we did a little soul, soul searching and said, Hey, we don't know the full impact of this. Um, but we had some R and D that was in works that we said that we knew we couldn't do for the original, if we were delivering in 2020. And so we, we did some soul searching and said, Hey, um, this technology will make this device incredible. And I mean, night and day compared to anything else that's out there. But, you know, we knew that it wasn't going to be ready in 2020 with the unknown of the supply chain. We said, hey, let's go ahead and take the hit. Let's delay a year. And then we'll be able to, to incorporate this new uh, technology. And, and we do have that today. So it's all in, you know, up in production and we're, we're ready to go on it. Um, and I, I really can't say enough even all of our incredible fans are like, we cannot wait to get our hands on this. You know, I've been building these types of things for forever. They don't even know like this, this is truly a paradigm shift. Like it is completely different than anything that's out there that they've even seen. And, and, you know, we always like to say the best thing on game board is something that we haven't even thought about yet because we're, you know, we're putting together this incredible platform, but people will take that and apply it in all sorts of new ways that we're not even thinking about. So very exciting. Have, have you seen um as it comes to fruition right and you obviously getting excited to you know the boards are landing now mm -hmm. uh and mm -hmm. we're launching our beta program you know the you're starting you know we know there's other competitors out there how has that mm -hmm. um helped uh how has that challenged and i'll throw this over to shale is yeah. do you see that as a positive or negative or or i don't care or what is it when you see competitive boards coming out. I think it's very positive. I think it shows what the future of this industry is, right? And ultimately, competition is it it, it drives for better product from our, from us, from them. Like, and I think ultimately it's not even about us and our competitors. It's about who can deliver the best experience to the player, right? This is about the player. Are, who are they going to pick and who are they going to say is the best play experience? And that's who we all have to focus on because ultimately that's the deciding vote, right? And for us from the business side, I think, I think the more people that are building this shows that there's a need for something like this in the market, that this is where tabletop is going. This is the future of tabletop, right? And collectively, we are all on the same mindset, on the same page about like where this industry could go and mm. what it's actually capable of doing, right? And, and pandemic allowed people who are, you know, bottlenecked in manufacturing, who are still bottlenecked, I'm not, the pandemic is not over, right? Everyone is still bottlenecked in manufacturing. It's a way to distribute and it's a way to publish your games that does not exist for us. When right. authors can't get their physical books out to people, they can just push it out on Kindle and you still can access tons of people. Who, where is that for tabletop creators? It does yeah. not exist, right? And we want to be that bridge between helping people and democratizing that access and democratizing play. So the more people in this industry, the better. So you just threw uh, out the rest of my questions because my oh, question is around, you know, why should a game <laughs> publisher jump on board? I think it's a, it's a question of like the Hasbro's, the Watsies, the games yeah. workshops, you know, what is, what is in it for them on the, on a platform like this? It's um, you're, you're throwing a wrench into their manufacturing platform, right? I, so I why, why believe? I think we're providing a solution, right? Like the state of the world has changed. And for those that think that it is temporary, I think that's misleading. I think that this is the state of the world for the next few years, if not longer. And I think that people need to adapt and evolve and understand how to best utilize and understand what their audience needs. Because if you don't, that is when it's an extin extinction level event, like as Phil put it from Steve, Steve Jackson's post, right? How do, you, how do you evolve and how do you stay ahead of it? And that is a question that's up to every big publisher and small publisher and creator and developer of tabletop games right now. Do you embrace the future and come on and mm -hmm. democratize how we're playing together or do you wait for this to be over? Oh, you just and I, I would add to that. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see about, yeah. I, I would add to that that, um, you know, it's never going to destroy the existing you know, cardboard industry, right? I mean, you look at Kindle, Kindle didn't get rid of books, 
I mean, there are obviously still tons of books, tons of bookstores. It is a different way to consume it. It's a different channel entirely. So I, I don't look at this as, as cannibalizing those sales. Right. Um, it is an evolution. The, the industry is changing and it's, do you want to get on board the evolution or do you want to sit back and, and hold tight and say, no, 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 I'm drag my feet. Kind of a Netflix blockbuster analogy, right? Um, it's not saying that it's going oh, away. I, I, listen, man, I've heard him say that at least three times in the last two days. So yeah, yeah I'm hoping we're the, the Netflix. Is, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. Yeah. Me too. But, but the point is, yeah, they, they do, you know, it is a change and, and yeah. they need to embrace change, but also this, it's not cannibalizing. It is, yeah. it is really expanding the reach to where people who wouldn't have gone out and bought that game, because maybe it was way too complicated for them. They don't know anybody who plays it. Now they can come to game board and they can say, oh, I want to try this game because now sure. I can actually learn how to play it on my own or, you know, in, the, in, in my home without knowing somebody who plays it. So, so there's a lot of, of um, the evolution, but also the, the broader reach of audience is going to be yeah. humongous for publishers. Well, and that's been the boogeyman for the industry for God, since the eighties video games are going to kill board games. And it didn't, it opened up more mm. and it was mobile phones and apps and that's going to kill them. And that actually opened up branding opportunities and, and enhancing mm -hmm. gameplay and, and so I think it's great. I think it's a, the more the merrier, the more that brings in more people, more games, more development to the industry, everybody, you know, benefits. Mm -hmm. from that end. And I think that also brings up the Agreed. point um, that Shale had just said is about the de democratization of the industry a little bit. Um, when you can go shop direct, buy anything direct, download, you know, and stream services um, on the creator side, this opens up even more doors, right? To be able to get your game to the marketplace. So talk a little bit about the independent developers, right? The independent publishers, not the big giant ones out there, but the guys who are, I've got a game idea, I wanna get it out. How does this benefit them? What do they, how should they, you know, play in this field? Yeah, reach out to us right now. Smaller <laughs> no, but seriously, right? Like, I think that for us, like we're new and we're hungry. And I think that we are always on the lookout. Like Tim said earlier, the best game on game board is something that we've never thought of. Right. Right. And for us, like the more ideas, inspiration, tabletop game creators that are coming to us, you know, we're not building our own IPs. We're not competing with any of these developers, right? Like we want to encourage and enable them to a new platform and to a new product. So we are not competing with them. We want to help mm -hmm. them bring their games to game board. So I would say if you're a small publisher, medium size, it doesn't matter for us. It's bring your games to us. Let us evaluate it. How is it feasible to put it on our platform and let you put in our pipeline? Let us put your games on the pipeline. Sure. Yeah, and, and from the, the tech perspective, you know, the, our a key strategy for us was to um, meet developers where they are. So that's that's using the Unity engine, using the Unreal engine, <laughs> using native Android, using using JavaScript. Our SDK interfaces with all these different game engines or or development methodologies, and that's that was very much on purpose. We didn't want to say, "Hey, come learn a brand new language and 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 build a brand new game." If they already have something on iOS that's there way ahead of the curve and they could get something going. If they, if it's a brand new game, if they're like, Hey, I'm gonna put it on Kickstarter. Yeah. We'd love to hear about it. I mean, if that's something that we can either um, help you develop as, as far as, um, you know, getting that digitized onto uh, to game board from an analog state, we, we'd love to hear that. We'd love to see that pipeline and, and understand, you know, how do we get great games on a game board? So how do they, how do they get in touch with you? Here's your plug. Lee. Father oh, Lee. me. I'm the guy. Oh, wow. Contact me. The one who worked for us for free during pandemic. <laughs> it all worked out for me. So go ahead, Tim. What is that? Yeah, I was just say go to yeah lastgameboard.com. Go to the developer section. You can understand a bunch, uh, a lot more in there. There's um, there's you know information about the SDK. You reach out to Lee at lastgameboard.com or myself, uh, Tim at lastgameboard.com. Are you taking his cell phone at his home address as well? Yeah. Uh, yeah I'm not going to dox the guy, but. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you got a fire pit in the backyard. Bring your own beer. Hang out. Exactly. Hang out. Yeah. Exactly. Billy, Billy will be there. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, but so, uh, I, I think this is, I mean, obviously I'm a fan since I work for you guys and I am a big part of it, but, uh, I think it's honestly, it's, it's something the industry has been crying for. I think it's something that, uh, the hardest part is making that first leap for, for the industry. It's a notoriously slow industry to evolving. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, it's can be good and can be bad. I think that's why you see so many new game companies, independent companies popping up with great ideas that maybe the big the big kids didn't want to take on or, um, you know, we're, we're not really seeing the marketplace. Um, they will get on board, uh, literally to the game board. It's, it's going to be the smaller nimble groups that are like, Hey, I'm, I can do this. I want to be with Netflix, not blockbuster, um, and things mm -hmm. like that. So, so my last question and it's probably the biggest question of all is like, what is the vision for tabletop games? Where do you see it going? And not, not in the next year, but in five years from now, ten years from now, how do you see this? How do you see um, the last game board being relevant in a world that you are now, let's say, you know, a big part of it, right? You are not just a, an upstart; you're actually, you know, a, a you're the blockbuster, so to speak. Where is the world going? I know it's a bad bad way. Yeah, to say. I was gonna say, wait. <laughs> but where where do you see it going? Where where do you where do you want it to go? The two of you. I mean, for me, like, I would love a game board in every household, right? And I want, I do. You're doing a Bill Gates? You're pulling the yeah. Bill Gates. Okay. <laughs> yeah. no, I'm going to do it. I'm going to Bezos this thing. No, I'm kidding. Um, I, I really think that game board has the power to be accessible to all. And I truly mean that. And that is if we don't lose the core value of why we created this. And that was to bring people together, right? We want to be the ultimate platform for tabletop that gives publishers, developers, players, the ability to push out new content, iterate on existing and future games with a massive audience, right? Play with people from all over the world, connect and meet on game board and play your favorite tabletop games. We want to be the central place where people can go to play any types of games they want. Obviously, focused on tabletop and RPG, but really it's about an evolving platform. And that is the one thing that we want to double down on, right? Hardware, sure, there's tons of people doing different things with the hardware, but it's it's what experience and what platform are we delivering? And that is what we want to hold true to, no matter how far we go. And we will go really far with Game Board. And from my perspective, I, you know, I, I see Game Board as really um, taking that co-leadership position with the the epics, with the valves, with the, I mean, the PlayStations, the Microsoft, right? Gaming in terms of a, an overall umbrella, um, you know, there's a lot of talk about a, a gaming metaverse, right? And, and there, you know, the reason for it is obviously there's so much interoperability now that that's going cross platform. And, but then, but then, you know, I've got this ID and then I've got to have a different ID system that translates it over here. There's all this still friction, right? And there's, there's, oh, I can't take this asset that I bought on this system, bring it over to this one. That, that is where, you know, it exists today and, and it's, it's friction, it's, it's broken. Yeah. So I think that Game Board can really help in terms of working with all these other gaming companies and leaders in the industry and titans today, um, but really help establish those protocols, help establish those, those procedures and those standards and those norms and really yeah. help um, um, shape that. Not, not from a, hey, do as we say, but, but again, coming from that community side where, hey, this is what players are feeling. This is what creators are feeling. How do we bring all this together across, again, gaming as a, as a whole um, and, and really make sure that, that we are putting together a, a universe that we, we love? I just wish I could bring my player sheets from the 80s into the game board and use them. I had some <laughs> amazing characters back then. so That's great. I oh, that's would great. pay money to see that league. Yeah, find them, Lee. Yeah. Come on, they got to be in the closet. Full on somewhere. gear, full on yeah. gear. Full on gear. I want to see this. Yeah, I love yes. someday. Your someday, if we know. ever meet in person, right? Yeah. Yeah, no I mean, kidding, no kidding. As far as I know, you're an illusion. <laughs> I don't know how to take that. I think it's a positive. I'm not a human. Or, like, it's, I thought we, <laughs> we're going to be at Gen Con, right? This is a, this is airing before Gen Con. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right around the same time. Yeah. September yeah, 17th yeah. weekend, we will be there. Uh, we have a booth for Game Board. Come, masks up, try Check Game it out. Board. Don't yep. try to shake my hand. It'll be great. <laughs> no hugs. 
No. Uh, namaste, right? Yeah. Namaste. <laughs> <laughs> and on that, we will end our COVID <laughs> Mojo Nation Play Creators Conference. I want to thank Shale and Tim. You guys are fantastic. I'm huge fans of yours, obviously. Um, and, uh, of course, Billy uh, Langsworthy over at Mojo Nation and, and the whole team. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for all your support of the industry. Thank you for your support of uh, what we do. And um, yeah, if you have an interest in game board and you have content, or if you just want a, a cool demo, you know, give us a shout. Uh, thanks so much. Awesome. See you guys. Thanks, everybody.